Before introducing Gauss Law, you need to understand these two things, electric field lines and electric flux. Okay, imagine you have a charge, say a small point carrying electric charge Q. We know that other charges around this charge either get pushed away or pulled toward it because of the electric force, right? But how do we see or imagine that invisible influence? That's where electric field lines come in. Electric field lines are like imaginary arrows we draw in space to show the direction and strength of the electric force that a positive test charge would feel if placed there. For example, around a single positive charge, the electric field lines spread out evenly in all directions like rays from the sun, showing that the force pushes other positive charges away equally in every direction. Similarly, around a negative charge, the electric field lines all point inward toward the charge, showing that it pulls positive charges toward itself from every direction. We use the letter E to represent its strength. Now, when you see field lines packed closely together like this, it means the strength of E there is large. And when the lines are spread out like this, the strength of E is small. So. These lines don't really exist physically, as they're just a visual tool to help us understand where the electric force points and where it is strong or weak. Note that this electric field is a vector, as it has both magnitude and a direction. Now, electric flux, which we represent using this symbol phi with subscript E, denoting it's an electric flux is a number that you get when you count how many of those field line arrows pass through a surface. Imagine you have a flat sheet and 10 straight arrows, representing the electric field lines, pointing toward it. If the sheet is held perpendicular to the arrows, all 10 arrows pass straight through, so the flux is 10 units. Now, if you tilt the sheet so it is at 45 degrees to the arrows, fewer arrows pass directly through it. Say only about five arrows effectively go through, and so the flux is smaller, about five units. Now, if you turn the sheet parallel to the arrows, none will pass through it, and the flux is zero. Also imagine the same ten arrows pointing toward a small square sheet. Maybe only four arrows pass through because the sheet is small. Now replace it with a sheet twice as big in the same position, now eight arrows might pass through it, so the flux is larger. Hence, electric flux depends on three things, the number of field lines or the strength of the electric field, then the angle between the field lines and the sheet, and the area of the sheet. Now, think of a closed surface, like a football surrounding some charges. Electric flux through this surface measures the net number of field lines passing out of this surface. If more arrows leave the football than the ones that enter it, we say the flux is positive. If more arrows enter than leave the surface, we say the flux is negative. Electric flux through a surface can also be described mathematically using the idea of a closed integral. Imagine the surface is made of many tiny patches, and through each patch, some electric field lines pass. For each tiny patch, the flux is calculated as the electric field E at that patch multiplied by the area of the patch DS and also multiplied by the cause of the angle between the field and the patch, say, cos theta. This tells us how much of the field actually goes through that tiny patch. Now, to get the total flux through the entire closed surface, we add up the contributions from all the tiny patches. In math language, this adding up is written as a closed surface integral of vector E dot with vector ds. Here, the small area of each patch is itself a vector ds that points perpendicular to the surface at that patch like this. Then the dot product between two vectors here automatically takes care of the angle between the field and the patch. So this way, flux helps convert the field lines, which is a vector, into a single number that measures how much electric field actually passes through a surface. Now you are ready for Gauss Law. 
Gauss law links these ideas by saying that the total electric flux through any closed surface depends only on the total charge enclosed by that surface. That is, the total electric flux depends only on the sum of the Q values trapped inside the football and nothing else. The beauty of this law is that it doesn't matter what shape the closed surface has. It could be a sphere, a cube, or even a weird shape like this. As long as it encloses the same total charge Q, the net flux will be the same. This means the law cares only about how much charge is inside, not about how the surface looks on the outside. In mathematical form, the total electric flux equals the sum of the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity of free space or vacuum, which is written as the closed integral of vector E dot vector ds equals Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. This epsilon naught, also called the permittivity of free space, is just a constant whose value is this. Now, let's derive Gauss' law for a simple case. A single point charge, Q, placed at the center of an imaginary sphere of radius R. From Coulomb's law, the electric field, due to point charge at any point on the surface of the sphere at distance R, has a magnitude equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by Q divided by R square, and it points radially outward. Here, ds also points perpendicular to the surface, which means radially outward. Since the field strength and direction are the same everywhere on the surface, the flux through one small patch is E multiplied by ds. To find the total flux, we add up the contributions from all patches over the whole sphere. Now this E is constant for a given radius r, right? So we can take it out of this integral, and we are left with integral of ds, which is nothing but the surface area of the entire sphere. The total area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared, so total flux equals e multiplied by 4 pi r squared, right? Now substitute the value of e from Coulomb's law like this. Hey, the pi and r square terms cancel out, leaving total flux equals q divided by epsilon naught. This simple result shows that for any closed surface enclosing a point charge Q, the total electric flux depends only on the charge inside and not on the size or shape of the surface. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.